Hey guys, today I'm doing a follow up video to my OS 10 for beginners um, with 10 tips for troubleshooting. So you may already know the basics of OS 10, but you might have run into some problems along the way. So hopefully I can resolve at least some of your issues. I'll be doing 10 different troubleshooting tips. So let's actually get on with the video and I'll be over at my computer. So yeah, top now and I'm going to be doing my 10 troubleshooting tips for semi beginners on OS 10. So it's at number 10, by the way, this is in no particular order. So yeah, here we go, it's at number 10. Now, I've seen a lot of people run into this issue when they're using OS 10, and it's actually how, it's very simple, but it's actually how to adjust the volume. Now, there are two ways, two easy ways of actually doing it. Number one is to actually go onto your desktop and look at the menu bar. And at the very top right hand corner, you can see a kind of semi um, speaker looking icon and if you just select that and drag it to how high or low you want the volume the other way is to actually get your keyboard and at the very far right are these three keys there are mute volume down and volume up it's right next to the eject key so that's just a quick way of actually how to adjust your volume and I know people who actually don't know how to do that. Another thing is um, when your computer actually switches on you hear this bong chime sound. Let me see if I can play it. Okay, see so you hear that, you, what you just heard. Now sometimes when you start your computer you don't actually hear a bong and you think that there's something wrong with your computer. Well, they actually, usually 9 times out of 10 what's happened is you've muted your computer before you shut it down. So next time you go to switch it on, the speakers aren't up, so you won't be able to hear it. There's something wrong with your computer, and what you have to do is turn on the volume, and if you restart, you'll hear the bong again. So that's tip number 10. Number 9 is the dock. Now, um, if you open up a window, and you may be working in, I don't know, I'll open up Chrome, for example. You may be working in Chrome, and your dock is way too big it may be getting in the way some applications actually go all the way down to the bottom I can't physically with Chrome I don't think oh I can okay so they go all the way down to the bottom like that and you think your dock's way too big or it's in the way of what you're trying to do there are two solutions to this one you can right click on this little divider at the side it will have lines right at the very far right right click it and click on what you do is right click it Let's turn that off and turn hiding on this will hide your dock until you put your cursor at the very bottom or wherever you actually have your dock on the screen left right or bottom so it hides it until you put it your cursor down the bottom another thing you can do is if I just turn that off turn hiding off is at, mo at the top of most applications now that have been updated it should have been um, is this little arrow pointing into the corner if you click on that they'll actually make your application full screen and that will be the only thing that's on the screen not um, interfering with anything else okay so that is tip number nine moving on this kind of goes with the last one which was about space now say you have a window this is very a lot of people get into trouble with this you've just opened up Google Chrome for example and on Windows you're used to the window filling up the whole computer screen. On Macs usually we don't fill up the whole computer screen but there is a way of doing that. As I said before you could just press the little um, arrows in the corner and that will go to full screen or you can go at any corner of the window and resize it Okay, as I'm doing. go bottom left right side side and just resize it any corner okay do bear in mind this has been a recent addition to OS 10 I can't remember I think from Lion you could do it from any corner but from Snow Leopard and below I believe it's only from the right hand bottom corner you could adjust it well don't quote me on that one so that is tip number eight Tip number seven is um, you may have installed some applications on your computer and when you switch on your computer now the applications open automatically and it may be really annoying 
um, when it does that it slows down the processes and because it has to load the application at the start and it's just it's not very convenient now you may be trying to figure out how do I stop it from launching at the start and it's actually extremely easy so I'm going to show you what you need to do is go into system preferences you can either do that by going to the Apple system preferences or you may have it in the dock or it may be in your finder applications and then system preferences so I select that and then you're going to go to users and groups then you're going to go to login and here at your login you can see what applications are automatically open when you log in see I have iTunes, your Chrome, Calendar and Speak Synthesis Server that's for the automated time um, announcements so I don't want these three here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and press this minus button right next to the plus. It's actually going to delete. Um, not going to delete the application. Don't worry. It's going to delete it from starting up. So we'll click that and we'll do it again. And now all three of those have gone. And now next time I restart or switch off and switch on my computer, those applications are not going to switch on. So the next tip, that was tip number seven. I believe I'm on tip number six now. Um, is changing your wallpaper. Now. When you get your Mac, you're going to get this stand wallpaper. I just put it on here to show you this galaxy type thing. And you may not want that. You may want to have a photo from, um, you may have put a photo in your pictures folder at the side here. Or you may have one on your desktop or something like that. So an easy way to change it is to actually go into system preferences. Now the easiest way to do it is to right click on your desktop and click change desktop background or you can go to Apple system preferences it may be in your dock system preferences finder applications and system preferences so I'll click on that and we're going to click on desktop and screensaver now we've done that we're going to select desktop if it's not already selected desktop pictures and you can choose from Apple's standard array of pictures or you may have your own picture so what you're going to do is you're going to select folders and automatically your pictures folder is going to come up as you can see I have a picture of an Android version of me and if I click on that it actually puts that as my wallpaper now I can choose to fill the screen fit to screen so it looks a bit better now but you have these blue edges it's not very it's not meant for my computer stretch to fill screen makes me look fat <laughs> center or tiled a tiled is quite nice actually so we could do that and yeah that's actually how to change your desktop from here you can also change your screensaver so you can get all these options of screensavers you get the loads actually and you can actually download your own screensavers if you want to so that was tip number six I'm on number five now which is the DVD drive now most modern Macs now uh, I believe new iMacs new Mac minis the higher end Mac MacBook Pros and soon to be Mac Pro do not come with DVD drives. If you want a DVD drive, you have to purchase an Apple Super Drive or a third party one or whatever. But if you have a MacBook Pro that has a DVD drive, because they still sell those, and you put your DVD in and you're wondering how the hell do I get it out now? So I'm going to show yeah. you. I put in Paranormal Activity, an awful movie. And yeah, so you can see it shows up on my desktop. Now, quick tip. If your drives or hard drives or DVDs do not show on your desktop, what you can do is you can press Finder, Preferences I believe, yep, um, General and show these items on my desktop. So I can show you hard drives, external disks, so that may be external hard drives, memory sticks, etc. CDs and DVDs and iPods. I don't need connected servers, so I don't have any servers. Okay, so I can show those on my desktop. Now you can see it on your desktop how the hell do I eject it from my drive because there's no button at the side with like PCs where you can just click on the drive button and it will eject so I'm going to show you one way you can do it is by getting the actual icon and you can see that when I click on it my trash can turns into a eject looking um, icon and if I drag it all the way down to eject if, although it says trash it will actually eject my drive my drive my CD sorry that's one way the next way you can do it is by actually looking on your keyboard 
and at the very end it's always going to be this depending on what keyboard you have I do believe I do believe it's F12 on a standard PC keyboard if you have an iMac or um, Mac Pro or Mac Mini it's this key here at the very far right it's the last function key or F12 on standard PC keyboards so I'm just going to drag that down and it's going to eject it you'll probably hear it in a second there you go, it ejected my CD right here and I can close it again with the function key ok so that was just a quick tip now we're on tip number 4 which is removing apps from your dock so you have your dock here and I do believe this is an addition since Mountain Lion you can't actually physically drag up a a application it's 830 <laughs> sorry about that to actually get rid of it so we need to do and I actually find this to be better because I kept accidentally always removing um, applications from the dock and it got really annoying so what you have to do is you have to actually get the app what app do I use I don't use contacts get the app and drag it to the bin don't worry it's not going to delete it and now you've made more room on your dock so you just do that with whatever applications you don't use so that's just a quick tip and tip number three how do you really quit applications so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Chrome and I'll open Chrome up and I'm done for the day I'll finish searching on YouTube yada 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 I've done so I quit with the which you probably most likely assume just the X right next to the minimize and maximize but as you can see, underneath the Chrome icon, there's still a dot. That is telling you that the application is running in the background and it's still open. So what you need to do is you need to click on it. There's actually a couple of ways you can do it. You can click on it, click Chrome at the top and quit Chrome. If the window's already closed, you could right click on it and press quit. And I don't know why you need to ever do it this way, but you can press Apple, force quit and then force quit Chrome but I don't want to do that, I'm just going to right click it and press quit ok now you can see the dot has gone from the bottom of the chrome icon and it is actually now finally quit tip number two is deleting applications this may not be as, it's actually simpler, simpler than windows but it may be too simple and you're thinking there's more to it Deleting an application is extremely easy. All you need to do is find the application you want to delete. So I go applicate, I go find our applications, find the application you want to delete. So I may want to delete for some reason Candy Bar or App Cleaner actually. So I get that and I drag it to my trash can. Once it's in the trash can, right click and press empty trash. I don't really want to delete that now so I'll get that later and just press empty trash you'll hear a little sound animation and the app has been deleted and tip number one which is quite important is scrolling if I open up for example if I go to YouTube now do you see a scroll bar at the right hand side of the window because I don't and this is quite new for Mac users they don't know how to scroll how do I do it and it's all about gestures on Mac now so if you have a laptop you have a glass trackpad very similar to this one or even if you have a magic mouse it's similar as well so what you actually need to do is it's also dependent on your mouse I should say so if you have a normal regular PC mouse that has a um, if it has no scrolling whatsoever like no scroll wheel scroll ball whatever it will actually appear as a menu a menu bar a scroll bar and then you can physically drag it like we're in olden times but on new Macs what you do is if you have a trackpad magic trackpad or a built-in trackpad to your laptop you just get two fingers and you would scroll this trap has not connected to my Mac Pro so it's not going to actually do it but on my Magic Mouse all I need to do is get one finger and scroll like so up to go up down to go down it's very easy it may be insulting your intelligence a bit but some people actually get stuck and don't know what to do have a bit of a mental rage about it 
as you can see if I do click it it comes up for a split second but as soon as I let go oh okay well it's not gone but usually it does go after a second it will disappear see like so so that has been my top 10 troubleshooting tips for new slash semi new Mac users um, don't forget to rate comment and subscribe and watch my other videos because it will help um, see you later